Hi everyone, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. If you're looking for some summertime DIYs, I have so many fun, simple, and quick ones to share with you featuring my Cricut Explore Air 2. I wanna thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. Our first projects are going to be iron-on or HTV material projects, so I am changing that dial over to iron-on. That's gonna preset all of our settings so our machine will cut our material perfectly every time. So up first, we are going to personalize a beach towel. I'm just measuring here to see about the size that I need to cut my personalization with. I love beach towels. It's a great way to keep track of them, whether you're at the pool, at the beach, camping, or even at the river, or you can even make these as gifts. They're perfect for friends and family that maybe have a summertime birthday. This one I'm making for my son. So in the Cricut design space, I used the text option and typed out his name, picked a font that was sort of in a typewriter style font that I thought he would like, scaled it down to size and then hit make it. In this screen is a very important function. You need to mirror your image because with HTV, we actually have to cut our design out upside down. So what you do is you install your material onto your cutting mat with the shiny side down, mat side up, and our machine is going to cut this upside down for us. And then we can go ahead and weed out all of the parts that we do not want ironed onto our towel. So this material actually is heat activated. So the blue part that I'm pulling off is not sticky at all. It's more rubbery. And once we heat set it, it will activate all that adhesive. But the clear part is sticky. That's gonna help hold this down onto our towel while we heat set it. So I'm using my Easy Press. I have it set to 315. And once this Cricut logo turns green, we know it's heated up and ready to go. You're going to preheat your materi material for about 10 seconds before applying your design. So get your design where you want it, and then you can come back in with your heat press or a really hot iron. I always like to lay a flour sack towel over my project. You can hit that green button and it will actually count down for you. I love that feature. So there's no getting distracted and you won't overheat your project. And also then once it goes off, it will actually beep to tell you it's time to remove your easy press. My project is a little bit bigger than the size of my easy press. So I just moved it over, hit the button again, and then you'll flip over your project and heat seal this in one more time for about 10 seconds on the back side. That'll pull the fibers into your HTV. Let it cool down. And once it's cool to the touch, you can remove that clear plastic top. And then you have a very professional and a really nice beach towel that you can now keep track of. Now, what about a beach bag or even a pool bag or some type of uh, bag that you can carry around your necessities for your outings during the summertime? I'm using a metallic HTV for this. So again, measuring about the size that I want. Now I'm going into my Cricut Design Space and going into the images. So this is a pre-made design that you can find in Cricut Design Space. I scaled it to size and then I turned all of it black because I wanted it all to cut at the same time. Again, make sure to mirror your image. Put the shiny side down on your cutting mat and the matte side facing up. You can feed that into your machine. Still on the iron on setting and it will cut out your design for you. And then here is the trick to ironing on tote bags like this one. I'm actually adding my heat mat to the inside of the tote bag and then preheating my fabric. And then once you have it preheated, you can add your vinyl design on top of here, get it in the placement where you want it, add your towel to the top and start heat pressing. Now this tote bag is very inexpensive. It was from Hobby Lobby and less than $10 on sale, but you could even use an old tote bag that you already have and make it look new again by adding a really simple and easy design like this one. My design was a little bit large, so I had to move my I heat press around and make sure I got everything heat sealed on there. And then instead of flipping it over, I'm actually placing my easy press on the inside of the tote bag to help pull the 
vinyl into those fibers of this tote bag. I would love to hear where your favorite summertime hangout is or place to relax is, whether it's the beach, the pool, the river, your porch or patio, you can leave those down in the comments below for me. Now let's make a summertime outfit. This is one of Cricut's t-shirts and I have got to brag on these. They are butter soft and they are so, so comfortable. This is a white one and I'm also gonna be using this set of Everyday Iron On. It comes in a bundle of three. So the blue vinyl from this is actually what I used in the towel in our first project. And now I'm gonna be using the mint and pink for this t-shirt for this project. So again, this one we're actually going to be cutting in two different colors. You can see there are two separate cuts we have to make. I sent these over to my machine, always making sure to mirror those images, preheating my fabric, and then applying just like I did in the first two projects. Now, since this project is two different colors, I decided to put my words on first, kind of get those set up. Once it was cooled down and I removed that plastic coating off of there, that gave me room to add the next color in, which was the pink and those pretty leaves. So then I just went through the process again of heat setting these with my Easy Press at 315 degrees, 30 seconds each. And then with t-shirts, you want to flip these inside out and hit the back one more time for 10 seconds, making sure to get the entire design. Now let's make a summertime hat to go with our t-shirt. I found this design, but I didn't like the little rippling waters ab above, so I decided to cut those out and just use the words from this. I'm using a white HTV for this one. You can see I just needed a really small design because our hat is pretty small. This one is from Hobby Lobby 2. I love the ponytail little hole in the back. And I'm actually gonna be using my mini press for this because this is a very small project. I love the easy, the mini press because it actually will help me to get around these weird curves that hats have. I left the cardboard inside the hat. That's gonna give us a little bit of stability as we are ironing. So I have mine set on two. There's actually not a temperature on these. There's just little squiggly lines. So there's low, medium, and high. I have mine set on medium and I'm just running this across the front of the hat and making sure that it all gets stuck down really well. I even took my heat mat and kind of put that on the inside of the hat so I could push down and get some really good pressure on there. And then once again, it had cooled off and was cool to the touch. I was able to remove that plastic. Could not be more simple, could not be more quick. And this was a fun new outfit which with my new beach bag, hat, and summertime shirt. Now, how about a cute accessory for your home? I found the cutest towel at Hobby Lobby. It was a hand towel for the kitchen and decided to add a cute little saying to the front to make it a little bit more summertime and personalized. This design we're actually going to offset. So there's an offset feature in Cricut Design Space that will make a background for your designs. And you'll see here in a little bit that my towel is very, very patterned. 
if that's a word. <laughs> so I made my wording and design white here and the background black because I want to cut these separately. I love that you can layer vinyl like this because otherwise my words would get lost on my towel if I didn't have this white background. So again, you want to make sure that you are mirror mirroring your images in design space before sending them over to your Cricut machine and then go ahead and weed them all out. You'll see here, this is the gorgeous towel that I found at Hobby Lobby. I love all the colors. I wanna make sure that I put that background down first and that it is going the right way so my words line up next. So same thing, you're gonna heat set your background first. Once it's cool to the touch, you can remove that plastic topper and then next, you can iron on your words on top of that and you'll see that you'll get that effect that you want. Otherwise, like I said, my pink vinyl would just completely get lost in that decorative background of the towel. See here how it now stands out. I love this new towel for our kitchen. It's so fun and so summery. Now let's switch gears and go from iron-on to vinyl. So I switched the dial on my machine. I love adding vinyl. It's some of the simplest things that you can do and create with your Cricut machine. And I love it because it just adds a huge, beautiful element to about anything um, that you can stick vinyl onto. I found some great coasters at Hobby Lobby. All of their summertime stuff was 50% off. So I just kind of had fun that day shopping and found some colorful things that I thought would be fun for summertime. And these coasters that you'll see here shortly, I thought would be cute to add personalization to the top. That way each one of us had our own coaster while we were outside and enjoying the outdoors. I'm using a black matte vinyl for this. I'll make sure to link down in the description box all of the products that I'll be using today, minus Hobby Lobby stuff because a lot of the stuff you can't find online, but all of the materials and supplies that I'm using, I will make sure to link down there. Once I had my vinyl weeded out, I'm using a transfer tape on this to remove the vinyl from the plastic or the paper backing that the vinyl comes on to apply it to my coasters. And then you just remove that sticky transfer tape off of the top and super simple, like could not be more quick and it just changes what these look like. And I love personalization things. I love putting names on things and designs on things. It makes it one of a kind and it makes it so easy. Now this is very similar to the coasters. I'm gonna be adding labels to some colorful flower pots this time though to create a herb garden. So you can even use vinyl if you are a gardener. This is a great way to label what your plants are. I'm using the same matte black vinyl for this. These pots again are from Hobby Lobby. I had so much fun that day shopping and obviously you can tell I love color. So these pots jumped right out at me. I'm just gonna add one label to each one of these flower pots.
This tumbler was so cute, again with the color, but I'm gonna add a little bit more pizzazz to it. I do wanna show you, cause I showed you in my last project with the flower pots, this little stand. I just used some one by threes and I nailed it together and put some felt on the edges. It makes a really nice stand if you're gonna be uh, adding vinyl to things that can roll around and it keeps it from, you know, you getting a crooked decal transfer. Um, so this is a DIY, super easy. You can use scrap wood for this or you can get one by three is really inexpensive too and make it as long and as wide as you need depending on what you're going to be creating. Um, with this, uh, since I'm layering this design, I have my white background going on first, starting in the middle and then pulling down on my transfer tape to transfer this. I used my squeegee to kind of get all those wrinkles and air bubbles out and then put my wording on top of that. These, all of these designs that you're seeing are from the Cricut Design Space. They're not designed by me. So if you have a Cricut machine, you can get these in the Cricut Design Space. That's another great tip to make your projects go, go more quickly so you don't have to do all the designing that takes a lot of time. So once I had this all layered up, I have a new cute accessory for the summertime. And again, this would be so great, so great for a gift for a holiday birthday or save this idea for the holidays even. Next, this is a wood plank from Dollar Tree, if you can believe that. I was so anxious to finally use one of these for something that we're gonna make a wood sign today. So I did sand this wood down first before adding one coat of white chalk paint. I wanted this to have a coastal or beach wood look, so I just gave it one quick coat so some of that wood grain would still show through. And we're actually gonna be doing three colors for this wood sign. The design, again, is from Cricut Design Space, and a tip for whatever you are adding three colors or multiple colors is to actually tape down your designs each color and then put your transfer tape onto each layer the tape keeps your design from moving around or it can actually kind of static cling on when you're not ready for it to so the tape will help hold it in place I'm starting with the biggest one first so I know my sizing is correct and then I'm adding those other two colors in before applying it to my wood sign. Now if you wanted to, you can also add each color onto your wood sign one at a time too. This kind of just helps your uh, transfer tape stay sticky so you can use it all in one swoop. But of course, whatever works for you, whatever method works for you, of course do that. Now, I don't have a swimming pool, but if you do, this would be the perfect sign to decorate outside. You could also alternate and change the pool into whatever word works for you and for your space. And now we're gonna use four different vinyl colors on a pitcher. I found this for only $5 at the Target Dollar Spot. And this is an instance where it is best to just put on one color at a time because this is a rounded surface. It's a lot easier for you to get uh, wrinkles and bubbles, so just doing one color at a time is the way to go. I have a full video on all kinds of Target dollar spot summertime DIY, so I'll have that video popping up on your screen, and you can go check out that next for more summertime inspiration. If you're new here, I would love to have you subscribe as I bring you new tutorials, inspiration here every single week. I wanna thank you all so, so much for joining me. I hope you have an amazing and fun summer, and happy crafting.